So which series convergence test do I use when I see a random infinite series? In this video, we'll go over 16 examples focusing on the strategy. Also, I have the link to the file with all these series convergence tests that you need to know for your Cal2 class. And of course, best of luck. Now, let's go ahead and get started with the first one. Series as n goes from 1 to infinity of n squared plus 1 over n to the third power plus 4. Firstly, we have a rational expression. And if you just ignore the plus 1 and plus 4, this is just n squared over n to the third power. It reduces to 1 over n. So this right here, we can just use a comparison test, right? Which one though? Uh, because we have a rational expression, let's try the limit comparison test. It will be easier. So LCT. And I will also tell you, try it with the series as n goes from 1 to infinity of n to the second over n to the third, which reduces to 1 over n. And remember, this right here is the harmonic series. This right here diverges. If we get to draw conclusion after the limit comparison test, then you mention that this right here also diverges. And I'm going to leave that to you guys for you guys to try to write out the full solution. Write down now, let's move to number two. Series as n goes from 3 to infinity of ln n over square root of n. Mm, if you try to integrate, eh, not so easy. But notice though, ln n, when n is bigger than or equal to 3, ln is bigger than or equal to 1. So this thing is this thing is bigger than or equal to 1 over square root of n. Then the series for that diverges. And we're talking about bigger than, so that is a comparison with inequality. So for this one, go ahead, try the direct comparison test, and I will tell you, use the series as n goes from 3 to infinity. Just forget about the ln n. Let's look at 1 over square root of n. And this right here is a divergent p series. p is equal to 1 half. So again, go ahead and show that again and write out all the solutions on your own. Show that it diverges as well. Now, number 3. Series as n goes from 1 to infinity, 2 to the n over n factorial. So what do you think? This right here, Whenever we see factorial, it's always a good idea to try the ratio test. So this right here, ratio test. And remember, the check for the ratio test is that we check the limit as n goes to infinity, and you apply the absolute value. For this one, it doesn't matter because everything is positive. And this thing is our a n. And what you want to do is here, you want to put down a n plus 1 over a n, but I usually like to write it as a n plus 1 times 1 over a n. And then work this out. If you get a limit that's less than 1, congrats, you can say that this series converges. If this limit is greater than 1, congrats, because you can still say this series diverges. But if this limit is equal to 1, then we have to try something else. Now, how about number 4? Series and then 4. This is just a number raised to the n minus 1 power. This one is a very nice geometric series. You can just mention that the common ratio is equal to negative 2 thirds. And remember, the absolute value of the common ratio, this right here, it's less than 1. And in fact, you are done. I was that's pretty much the full solution. Converges by geometric series test by looking at the common ratio. All right, number five. This is what we have, and we see that we have the factorial. So, of course, go ahead and try the ratio test. And once again, we do the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of a n plus 1 times the reciprocal of a n. All right. And I'm going to leave that to you guys. Now, number six. 
this is what we have. What do we think? Well, if you do the limit test, namely test for divergence, if you just look at that and take n goes to infinity, n over n plus 2, e approach 1. ln 1 is 0. So test for divergence wouldn't work. But notice this is n over n plus 2 instead of a logarithm. So we can use the log property to break it apart. Have a look. This is the same as the series as n goes from 1 to infinity of ln n minus ln of this, which is n plus 2. Now, what's this? This is ln of n, this is ln of n plus 2. The input is just off by 2, and then it's subtracting. Yes, this right here is a telescoping series. So try the telescoping method. And then try to see if the partial sum converges or not. Yeah. So again, try it. Number seven. Series as n goes from 1 to infinity, sine of 1 over n squared. Well, we have the 1 over n squared inside of the sine, yeah? Maybe a comparison is a good idea. But which one though? Do you really want to do inequality when you have sine? Maybe not. So try the limit. So this right here, limit comparison test. And I will tell you which the series and goes from 1 to infinity of that. Try it. By the way, does this one converge or diverge? Converge? Good. Yes, because p is 2, which is greater than 1. Now, how about this one? There's a very clear indication that we shall do what? Yes. You are right, alternating series test. Because this is alternating, we see the factor negative 1 raised to the n minus 1 power. So I will rewrite it so that you can see that we have negative 1 to the n minus 1 times the rest 1 over square root of 2n plus 3. This portion will be the bn. Go ahead and try the alternating series test. And remember, there are two things that we have to check. First, we are going to check if the limit as n goes to infinity of bn, if this is equal to 0, but I don't know yet, so I'll put down question mark. And then the second thing is, we have to check if bn plus 1 is less than or equal to bn. But I don't know yet, so I'll put down question mark. We have to make sure that bn goes to 0 and bn is a decreasing sequence. By the way, it's pretty clear to see that this right here is approaching 0. And then put n plus 1 here and then work out the inequality. This is also decreasing. So yes, this one here, here converges by AST. Number 9. This is what we have. So what do you think? We have a fraction here, yeah? power, yeah? n squared and instead of the square root, and then this is n to the third power. So try to pick out the dominating part and make a comparison. And this expression is pretty complicated, so perhaps the limit comparison test will work better. So this right here, limit comparison test with the series, n goes from 1 to infinity, just pick up this, which simplifies to n to the first power, and then pick up that. So n to the first over n to the third power, which is n to the second power on the bottom. Yeah. Now, how about number 10? The series, and we have cosine of 1 over n squared. Do we do the limit comparison test with the series as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared? Because we see the 1 over n squared. In fact, for this one, no. Why? Because if you just do the limit of this as n goes to infinity, 1 over infinity is 0, but cosine of 0 is 1. So in fact, for this one, do the test for divergence. And that is, we are going to check the limit 
as n goes to infinity of our a n here, which is cosine of 1 over n squared. But in fact, I'll tell you the answer. This right here is equal to 1, which is not equal to 0. Therefore, this right here diverges. Now, how about number 11? 3 to the n over 2 to the n plus 4 to the n. A fraction case, right? Picked up the dominating part. They are all exponential. So I picked out the bigger base. So consider 3 to the n, also 4 to the n. And now you see we are doing what? This is 2 to the n plus 4 to the n. If you ignore that, well, the denominator will get smaller. So the whole thing gets bigger. It's easier if you use the inequality. So for this, try the direct comparison test with the series. And the important part is you have to pick up this and that, the dominating part. Because this series is 3 to the n over 4 to the n, which is the same as 3 over 4 to the n. This is a what? It's a convergent geometric series because the common ratio r is 3 over 4. So r equals 3 over 4. And the absolute value for that is less than 1. So this right here converges. If you picked 3 to the n over 2 to the n, well, the common ratio will be 3 over 2. And you are going to a wrong direction because that diverges. So this is the way that you should head to. Now, for number 12, we have this expression raised to the nth power. Yes, we have n the exponents, so maybe the ratio test work. However, we have the nth rule here, which is the same as 2 to the 1 over n power. But don't worry too much though. Wouldn't it be nice if we can just get rid of this n? Sure thing, right? So why don't we try the root test? And remember for the root test, what do we do? We are going to check the limit. Right? We'll check the limit as n goes to infinity. And we'll just take the nth root. And technically, you put an absolute value. But this right here is all positive anyway. Anyway though, here, this is our a n. You just enter that in here. And the beauty is that the nth root and the nth power, they cancel. So you can just focus on computing this limit. And remember, if you get a limit that says this right here is equal to L, this right here converges. If L is less than 1, diverges. If L is greater than 1. And unfortunately, inconclusive, if L is equal to 1. On your test, do not draw the sad face. Four more, and this is what we have for number 13. What do you think? Hmm, do we pick up the dominating part, maybe the n or the square root of n and make a comparison? No, because for this right here, we can actually just multiply the n and n to the one half power, right? So in fact, we will just rewrite it. This is the series as n goes from one to infinity of one over n to the first times n to the Square root is the one half power. And we can just combine the exponents. This is one over n. One plus one half is three half, or if you would like, you can also put down 1.5, doesn't matter. So in fact, you are done right away because you can just look at the p here. p is three over two, but make sure you don't just write down the p, you have to indicate that the p is greater than 1. Therefore, what's the conclusion for this? If p is greater than 1 for the p series, you can say this right here, converges. Right? So, done for that. Now, number 14, we have n squared times e to the negative n to the third power. Maybe you can bring this down to the denominator and then try to draw some comparison or ratio test. That's fine. But if you think about this as x to the second times e to the negative x to the third power, do a quick goose up. Let u equal to this. 
what's the derivative of negative x to the third power? Negative 3x squared. And we have the x squared in the front. Aha! Maybe we can do the integral test for this. So for this, I'm just going to say we will do the integral test. So for the integral test, make sure that you indicate what the function that we will be doing, which is just replace all the n's with x's. So x squared times e to the negative x to the third power. Okay? And make sure you show that this function is decreasing, positive, and also continuous. And for my class, I just let my students to you know, provide a graph. One afterward, it's going to be decreasing. And then I'll just say 4x is greater than equal to 1. All right, number 15. We have n the power, n the power. Maybe we should just try the nth root. Eh? But if you take a look, if you try the root test, right? This is the root test. We do the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth root of that. I don't need absolute value because everything is positive. n to the n over n plus 4 and n to the n. They cancel and then I get n over n plus 4. But the limit as n goes to infinity of just n over n plus 4. This gives us 1. 1 is not good for root test. So what do I do? What if we just look at this expression and take the limit as n goes to infinity? Yes, let's go ahead and try the test for divergence. And remember for the test for divergence, you look at this and we check the limit as n goes to infinity of just that. So we are looking at n and then because they both have n in the exponent, I will write it as n over n plus 4 and then raise to the nth power like this. Now, here is the thing. As n goes to infinity, if you just look at the inside, you have n over n. Yes, you have 1 inside. But n goes to infinity in the exponent. So in fact, you end up with 1 to the infinity's power. We cannot draw any conclusion for this limit yet unless we do more work. So the goal right now is try to compute this limit. And then once you get it, you will see that is this going to give you 0? You will see that it's not equal to 0, OK? And therefore, you can conclude that this right here diverges by the test for diverges. All right, number 16, we have sine of n over n squared plus 1. The trouble here is sine of n because it's positive sometimes. It's negative sometimes because n goes from 1 to infinity. But don't worry, because this right here, it's actually a very clear indication for us to check for the absolute convergence. Let me write that down right here. We will check the series as n goes from 1 to infinity, and we apply the absolute value of sine of n over n squared plus 1 instead. The reason why is because, firstly, the bottom is just positive, so we just need to look at the absolute value of sine of n. So we are getting the series as n goes from 1 to infinity, and then absolute value of sine of n over n squared plus 1. Now, with the absolute value, we know sine is always going to be less than or equal to 1. Yeah? So we can replace this by saying this must be less than or equal to the series as n goes from 1 to infinity, and then just replace that with 1 and over n squared plus 1. Now, you check this, right? You check this to see if it converges or not. And to do so, you can just ignore the plus one on the bottom by doing a direct comparison test. And you will see, you will be able to say that this thing right here converges absolutely. Therefore, this right here also converges.